This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Virginia and Longstreet, the senior brigadier, became major general and then lieutenant general. Sorrel followed the fortunes of his chief, serving as adjutant general of his brigade, division, and corps, with rank successively as captain, major, and lieutenant colonel, and distinguished himself many times by his gallantry and efficiency. During the siege of Petersburg, the tardy promotion which he had long deserved, and for which he had been time and again recommended, came to him, and he succeeded Brigadier General Girardi, a gallant soldier, who had been killed in battle, as commander of a brigade in Mahone's division, A.P. Hill's Third Corps. When promoted, he showed the right spirit by making a faithful and brave courier his aide-de-camp. As a general, as well as while on the staff, Sorrel often had his place near the flashing of the guns. At Sharpsburg he leaped from his horse, with Fairfax, Gorey, Manning, and Walton of Longstreet's staff, to serve as cannoneers at the guns of the Washington artillery, whose soldiers had been struck down. While he was carrying a message to a brigade commander, his horse was shot under him, and still later, on the same field, a fragment of a shell struck him senseless, and he was for a while disabled. He passed through the maelstrom of Gettysburg, here and there upon that field of blood. The hind legs of his horse were swept away by a cannonball, and at the same time he and Latrobe of Longstreet staff were carrying in their arms saddles taken from horses slain under them. At the Wilderness, May 6, 1864, he was at the side of his chief when that officer was badly wounded, and when General Jenkins of South Carolina and Captain Doby of the staff were killed. He won his general's wreath that day, although it was some time before it reached him. At the crisis, when Longstreet's corps was going to the rescue, he was entrusted with marshalling three brigades to flank the advancing forces of General Hancock. Moving forward with the line of the 12th Virginia Infantry of Mahone's brigade, he endeavored to take its colors as it advanced to the onset. But Ben May, the stout-hearted standard-bearer, refused him that honor, and himself carried them to victory. When this battle was over, General Lee saluted him as General Sorrel. He was wounded in the leg while commanding his brigade on the right of the Confederate line near Petersburg, and again he was shot in the lungs at Hatcher's Run in January 1865, the same action in which fell the brave General John Pegram, then commanding Early's Old Division. During the illness resulting from this wound, General Sorrel was cared for by relatives in Roanoke County, Virginia and having recovered sufficiently, returned to the field. He was in Lynchburg, Virginia, on his way back to his command when the surrender at Appomattox ended the career of the Army of Northern Virginia. Scarcely any figure in that army was more familiar to its soldiers than that of General Sorrel, and certainly none more so to the soldiers of the First Corps. Tall, slender, and graceful, with a keen, dark eye, a trim military figure, and an engaging countenance, he was a dashing and fearless rider, and he attracted attention in march and battle by his constant devotion to his duties as adjutant general, and became as well known as any of the commanders. General Sorrel has not attempted a military history. He has simply related the things he saw and of which he was a part. He says of his writings, that they are rough jottings from memory without access to any data or books of reference, and with little attempt at sequence. What his book will therefore lack in the precision and detail as to military strategy or movement will be compensated for by the naturalness and freshness which are found in the free, picturesque, and salient character of his work. General Sorrel was of French descent on his father's side, his grandfather, Antoine Sorel de Riviere, had been a colonel of engineers in the French army, and afterwards held the states in San Domingo, from which he was driven by the insurrection of the Negroes in the early part of the nineteenth century. He then moved to Louisiana. His father, Francis Sorel, became a successful businessman in Savannah, Georgia, 
and his mother was a lady of Virginia. If he inherited from one those distinctively American qualities which were so...